Hi there, Sandy Alnock here, and I'm excited today to bring you the first in what I hope is going to be a small series of conversations with students of mine who have made great strides in their artwork. Lynn Lewitsky from Michigan is going to be sharing her story with us, and you can watch our wide-ranging conversation coming right up. Hello, Lynn. Glad Hello, you're Sandy. here. What's the weather like there now? We've got snow here. Um, it's very oh, gloomy, maybe mid 30s. We have no snow. It's supposed to snow later, but eh, it's more rainy, misty now. So let's get started. I'd like you to give us a little introduction about your history, like where you got started in making art or started thinking about it at all. And Kind of in general how you got here before we start talking about some of your more specific pieces. Okay so I was born and raised in Michigan in the metro Detroit area. Did really nothing creative as a child other than the usual child you know coloring books whatever they did in school. Um, our school didn't offer a whole lot of art classes so it was like eh, tried the piano not any good at it. Uh, orientation when I was younger going through high school was doing the science math because I wanted to go to vet school, which did happen. I graduated from veterinary school from Michigan State in 1982. Um, so really until I graduated, I didn't do really anything crafty because I was just, I was too focused on getting through school. Um, when I got out for somehow or another, I ended up going to a miniature store with a friend and I built a miniature house. So I think that was probably the start, you know, building some of the furniture, putting it together. Long story short, I moved to Florida for about nine years. When I was in Florida, there was a group there that did cards, a variety of things. Some of them, some of them did coloring, some of them did the die cutting, that kind of thing. And it was something I could do with my mother when she was down there. So we kind of went to the cards, went to a local store. If anybody's in Lakeland, shout out to Violets because it's a very nice store. So we did, I did some classes with them. They did a weekly card class. So learned a lot of things, some die cutting, some coloring. Took a, my very first in-person Copic class. And that got me hooked on the Copics. <laughs> so that's primarily when I did do cards, it, that's primarily what I do is, is, is Copics. I've tried some other things. Um, don't like them as much. I really like, like the effect I was able to get, but you know, when I started, it was very, very basic, you know, um, until then I started, you know, uh, I was trying to find some place to do with these cards. So I found um, Operation Right Home. So I started sending cards, you know, to you to, to send out to the, to the service people. And I think I got a little better doing that. But if there was something about the doing the numerous numbers at one time is so... I don't know that I really progressed doing that. I didn't really start progress until you stopped doing that and started doing classes. Boy, I should you have know. stopped earlier for you. <laughs> I, I guess so. I don't know, but it was it was a learning experience. It was like I enjoyed it. It was very relaxing, you know. Was you know, unfortunately, my job is a little stressful, so um, it was something I could do and just kind of leave all that behind. And I was looking at. I don't have pictures of my very first cards that I did, but I had found an old one that I got out. I'm not even sure how long ago I did it. And when I look at that, I say, oh, wow. I mean, it, it was good, but there was none of the, the shadowing and that kind of thing to make it look like the dog that I had put in there in front of the Christmas tree really belonged there because it was just kind of stuck on. It was very flat, very two-dimensional. So definitely practice. You know, I certainly got better. Ones I've done recently are are better, and I still do mostly coloring. Still do some stamping, but probably more of the I stamp the image and then I make the scene around it. That would be your influence, <laughs> but it's something. But it is it's something. It's like it just. I think it makes it more personal for me. It's like you know, okay, this is for this person, so they're gonna really, really gonna like this particular thing. We moved back to up here to Michigan because my dad got ill. And we wanted to be back closer to my brother, who lives in the central Michigan area. So then when he passed away, I found his 
briefcase that had his drawing supplies in it because uh, he did some more technical drawing. He mm -hmm. did heating and air conditioning. So he did he did do some technical drawing. I found his briefcase and he and there was his, his supplies. In fact, I still have his original set of Prismacolors that I really don't oh. want to use. They're just they're just kind of sitting there. I think it's a set of 12, but uh -huh. you know, they were his. So I thought, well, okay, let, let me maybe try this drawing thing because it was kind of a connection to him. I had never drawn anything in my entire life. He, I think, offered the drawing 101 class or it was already there. I don't really remember. So I did the drawing 101 class and I just kind of started from there and found that I enjoyed it and found that I did have some skill. Again, I think it's because it's very, you know, the architectural is very structured, you know, doing that perspectives kind of thing. My brain likes that kind of stuff. Uh, so it, it understands it. So that's kind of where that started. And then when I did that, then I moved on to the safari class. And that's what got, st got me started with probably the pastels because we use the Conti sticks, which, mm -hmm. you know, so then it's like, yep. Yeah. And then I got some pastels and it just kind of went from there. <laughs> For sure. Long story short, that's where I got where I'm at right now. Cool. Okay. And then, um, well, it's nice yeah. to know the safari animals are a gateway drug to pastels. <laughs> Yes, they are. I never they really are. thought of them that way. Well, it really is because, yeah, you do the graphite first, mm -hmm. you know, learned how to draw using, you know, either like the grid method, I think is what I used primarily when, when I was doing mm -hmm. those. And I still do that somewhat, although I do now what some people probably think cheat. I do actually trace some of the pictures, especially if it's a portrait for someone, they, they want it to look like their pet. Mm hmm you know, a lot of times I'll just get the outline and get the eye placement. So I know that that's where it is and where the mm -hmm. defining marks are. Uh, because, yeah, I don't want to mess that up because then it won't look like their pet. Right. Yeah. Right. So now and then I'll still freehand, but not too often anymore. I should do it more often just to keep in practice. Because what I don't I've been doing lately, because I've, I've done the tracing too sometimes when I'm trying for something very specific. But I've ended up trying to do the sketch myself on tracing paper so that I, you know, just kind of mess with it. And then I use that to trace onto my finished paper. Then I'm not tracing the yeah. photo necessarily. I'm getting the drawing yeah. practice because I, if I cheat, if I start to cheat, I will continue to cheat. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, so. I don't trace the whole thing. Like it's more for just the placement, you know, so that yeah. I make sure I get those eyes, especially right where they belong you yeah know, and the right have... scale the scale yes. is important with yes. animals too do you want to share sure, you want to... like maybe something yeah. from the big be... toward the beginning and yeah. then something more recent just so we can see so that transformation this one's probably in the one that's the cat do you see the, the cat you see it, uh -huh. it showing yep. up okay so this is the very first cat i ever did okay um i found colin bradley online and took some of his courses. This is one of his tutorials. So, you know, it's not bad for a first, you know, for a first one. And then I think you guys have probably seen this this one. This is the most recent one. This is this is George. Yes, that's the one yeah. I saw in the Facebook group. And I was just so excited to see your progress. Yeah, I mean that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just and it is, I mean, there's a few in between. This was, I think, a in between one, uh -huh. which isn't too bad. And then this one was the one just before George. Were those from Colin's class or were they yeah. ones you did on your own? This is actually someone's pet. This one, I think, is a um, the photo was a free one from like Pixabay or something along those lines. Okay. Um, some of the other people that I follow now on. Um, Patreon, I do Jason Morgan. So okay. I think the one with the cat, the kind of half cat is based kind of on one of his lessons. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, probably that's probably the other big thing is, is I found that helped me is I don't stick with one person. So I have a couple people and I go to them for different yeah. things. Jason is primarily a wildlife artist. What else have I done? This is probably the first dogs that I did. 
Okay. Uh, Cisco, that's my dog. Um, okay. I did him just recently. And even that one, I know I'm going to do it again um, because I don't like the grass. Ah. You know, but, you know, so, I, you know, this is my mother's dog and she loves this picture. Oh. So this was a little more recent too. So, you know, it's just, and some of it is obviously practice. I mean, there's quite a few in between. The other well, thing I'll put a thing. number of them on my blog post. So anything okay. that we don't talk about, they can go see your work over there. So um, what has it felt like going from different stages of your journey when you went from card making to making something that was more frameable? Like, what did that feel like inside for you as an artist? It was very rewarding to know that, oh, wow, this is something that I can do. You know, it's like, you know, I would look at like some of the things that, that you would do and other, not, not to single you out, but let's be real. You're the one that I followed primarily at that point. So to be like, man, I would really like to be able to do that. Um, and I tried some other things. I tried watercolor. Mm -mm. I'm not patient <laughs> enough. I, 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 I can't make myself wait for it to dry. So it's like, no, that didn't work very well. Um, colored pencils. I like them. They take too long. Okay. Um, you would think with what I do, I would be somewhat patient, but for this, no, I don't want to, something to take me five days to do that I can get done now in two, you know, depending, you know, mm -hmm. so it's like, it just, I, you know, I guess maybe it's a little ADD. I get distracted. <laughs> and like, oh, you know, so I, I need it to progress and to kind of complete show that it's progressing fairly quickly. Okay, so I guess it was more just a, it's kind of like a therapy thing, you know, when I moved from, the, I mean, I enjoyed doing the cards, but I find doing this, I find I relax much more. Um, kind of hard to explain, but it's just like, you just kind of zone out or it's just like this little Zen kind of feeling. It's nice knowing that some of the things I do for other people, that they then get enjoyment from it, you know, something that, that is tangible to them that they can, you know, some up, up a memory for them if it's, you know, especially if it's a pet that's no longer with them or, you know, that kind of thing. So it's nice making people happy. That is good. It's nice. You know, and I think maybe that's the big thing with the cards. They make people happy, but most of the time you don't know about it because you sent it off, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so you really don't know what kind of reaction you're going to get. You know, whereas this kind of thing, it's a little more personal yeah. gratification. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, mm -hmm. it's it's much more personal. I find too, and, and maybe this is one of the things that makes it more enjoyable for some people to make fine art as opposed to cards, is that I have fewer, fewer decisions to make when I've already decided this is what I'm gonna create. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna paint or draw this thing. And I have to make decisions within that. But when I'm making a card, I'm deciding on the stamp and the design and where the sentiment's going to go and all those things. Yep. And it's a lot different kind of thinking process than just, okay, now I'm going to do a horse. And right. this, this is, you know, I get a vision for that. And there's not all mm -hmm. those other things to add to it. Yes. So that might I have where a relaxation thing. comes from. Because I do use reference pictures. I, you know, I don't, none of these come out of my head. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas something yes. like with cards, like you said, it, it's, it's, you know, with card, you, you, it, you have to come up with the idea. It's like, okay, so I've got this little stamp of this rabbit. What am I going to do with this rabbit? This, I have a picture <laughs> and how detailed I want to make it, how realistic I want to make it. That's up to me, mm -hmm. but I don't have to worry so much about what else am I going to put in here? Yeah, once I pick a picture and decide, okay, this is what I'm going to do, then it's just, you know, there's the process, you know, I get the mm -hmm. picture, I get my line art, I do my color picking, you know, so it's like, okay, what colors should I be getting out so that I, you know, because I can't root through 500 pencils. So, you know, so I'll get a group out and say, these are the ones I'm most likely going to use and then just kind of go from there. Okay. Now you use mostly pastel pencils or do you use regular stick pastels too? I use, um, I use pan pastels, you know, so the, the cake ones, um, mm -hmm. do use a lot, a lot of that for background and for the blocking in. Um, mm -hmm. I do use some sticks and then 
pencils for for the fine detail. Mm -hmm. Those those final layers. My mom gave me her pastels. She was a pastel artist way back in the day, mm -hmm. and I I'm, I'm just tickled pink that that I have her supplies, just boxes and boxes she sent me, and I put them into drawers so that I could uh -huh. spend them all because they were it was just everywhere and they were all uh -huh. gray because the dust from all the, the pastels uh -huh. all over everything else. Mm -hmm. And for Christmas, I drew her some penguins and I used penguins. Collins yep. class for that. Did you? Okay. Yep. And I wanted to be able to create something with her pastels. And when I called them her pastels, she said, no, they're your pastels now. I'm like, no, mom, they're your pastels. Right. No, it's, it's like those pencils under my dad's. They're his pencils. They're not mine. Yeah. I mean, you know, they're, they're his pencils. It's like, yeah. Like that homemade bridge you made. So yeah. I've got this for, one. For anybody who I bought this one, the acrylic one. She's yeah. got one that you can buy in the store. But this is what she's talking about here. And it's got two ends like this that were stapled together by a company that mailed me a piece of furniture. And it's got two ends. So it sits up on the surface of yep. the paper. So I can lean my hand on this and not make a mess. Mm -hmm. So Otherwise, that's it, how I did my mom's penguins so that I wouldn't get my arm all over yep. them. Yeah, because otherwise it smudges and then you, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and then uh, you get fixed everything. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. All right, well, yes. let me see what else is on my list of questions. Um, what what was it that turned the lights on for you? Like, you know, when your brain lit up and said, oh my goodness, I could do this. What was it that might have made you think differently? I think finding my dad's stuff because I never would have thought about it. And then realizing as I went through the drawing classes, it was like, yeah, I can, I, I can, I can do this. You know, because I, I never would have thought, well, I can't, I can't draw a house and make it look like it's supposed to. I guess that, that I don't know, it was just a matter of being successful, getting it, you know, it's, it's, it's really hard to explain. It's just kind of <laughs> like, it just, it was like, I would just look at something and say, wow, I did that. Okay, I can do that. That means I can start doing more. The giraffe, I think the giraffe was probably the big, a big turning point for me because it, you know, it involves some color. Um, mm -hmm. well, and one of the reasons that I put out classes in so many different mediums is because you never know what's going to hit. You know, uh -huh. you found out that watercolor wasn't for you. And right. sometimes just taking a watercolor class is just enough to say, no, I don't want to do that. But sometimes it's a matter of trying those things before mm -hmm. you know what's not for you. And then you can settle in on what it is, what does work. Like the, the roses class was good because it made me explore other mediums. You know, I had already done some of the graphite already, I think, and the Copic, obviously. But then I did the colored pencil one and, and I enjoyed that. And I probably will look at some colored pencil again down the road again um, and give that a try again. The watercolor I didn't even attempt because I knew it would just frustrate me. So it was like, no, let's not go there. Let's just kind of, you know. Um, so. Okay, well, here's a question that was not on my pre-approved list mm -hmm. that I sent you. Let's see if we can throw you a curveball. Have you thought about using the knowledge that you've gained about doing animals and stuff. So say you've got that rabbit stamp now. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about trying to make that rabbit look really real? Because now you know how to do it in pastels. Or are you still coloring it the way you did before you started doing more realistic work? I have not tried to do the more realistic. Yeah. I thought about trying it. I thought about I thought about trying it. I just I just haven't done it yet. Yeah. It's like I would think as a meat, I mean, the roses that I did look pretty realistic. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, um, my aunt said when she saw them, she said she, she felt like she should be able to go up to them and smell them. Um, so why couldn't she be able to do that with an animal too? Hmm. Well, now you know how you can create it with pastels. Think right. about the translation to Copic yeah. or try them in pencil first, because that's a little closer. Yeah. It's a little more in between. A little more in between, yeah. And yeah. see, see what steps start to evolve for you. But I mean, but, if you did a card and you did a small bunny, you know, yeah. what would that be? You can just stamp it yeah. three times yeah. and try it in 
three different meetings yeah. and see what happens. Yeah, I have to try it and see. Now you have homework. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I am ever the teacher giving you a homework assignment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, no, I'll have to, uh, yeah, you're right. I have to give it a try and see with something that's, you know, alive, you know, that needs to look like it's like a real live bunny sitting there. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to dig through my stamps and see what I have. I have well, some that actually look like they're supposed to be like real live rabbits. You know, they're not, mm -hmm. they're not the whimsical kind. They're actually, yeah, that looks like a rabbit. Well, let me ask you to give some advice to somebody who maybe is where you were. They make mm -hmm. cards and they've been nervous about trying something else. They've told themselves they can't draw or there's some reason why they can't do something different. What would you tell them to start thinking about differently to help them get over that hump? Um, I would tell them there is no right or wrong in art. I mean, it, it's not like if you try something and maybe it doesn't come out the way you would like it to, then learn something from each piece. You know, it's like, okay, that didn't work. Try something else. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a matter of just, keeping at it you know I mean practicing and it's hard not to be negative try to surround yourself by, with people who appreciate what you're going through I found some of the Facebook groups are really quite good because most of those people have been where you've been you know where, when you're first starting but I, I think a, a lot of it is just to try learn something from every piece that you do you know and maybe you will find out that watercolor is not for you okay Try something else. And honestly, if you get some pleasure from it, then, hey, take that and run with it. It's like, you know, uh, you enjoy doing it. So what if it doesn't look like, you know, whatever, a Van Gogh or whatever? I don't want my stuff to look like Van Gogh. I want it to look like mine. You know, mm -hmm. um, I don't want it to look like yours or Collins or you know Jason Morgans or whoever's I mean I I want it to look like me you know to reflect what what I am so it's just paper it's just material there's no wrong way to do it, it follow a different person I, I mean I think the other thing too is I mean I do follow a couple different people because I learned something different from each one of them take what you know you, you see use what you can use get rid of what doesn't work for you and try not to stress about it. I mean, when I look back at them, and I was really happy with them when I did them, and when I look back at them now, I'm still happy with them because of where I was at the time. I mean, that's for someone who had never done it before, pretty darn good. Could yeah. they be, could I do them better now? Well, yeah, but so what? When I first started doing whatever, surgery, whatever, I'm sure I would hope I do it better now than I, than I did when I was a first year student. You know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. you just have to kind of keep practicing and yeah, do what works. Awesome. Get the, is the best materials that you can. I think that's the other thing too is I think a lot of people, they try, they don't want to waste good paper. Well, I find when I did that, you know, I would get, well, let me just try it just on this mixed media paper. Well, then when it doesn't work and you get discouraged, it's like you need to to use the best that you can afford. But even I've still done that. You know, I'll I'll get a big sheet of pastel mat and I'd be like, ooh, I don't want to cut that up. Because what happens <laughs> if I waste that? What happens if I waste that 11 by 14 piece of, of, of pastel mat? It's a piece of paper, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know. And if you learn something from it so that the next piece of yes. 11 by 14 is not going to be a waste yeah. that's it's not going to be a waste and it never it really never is a waste if you learn something from it you know um and I probably should have in retrospect I would tell people to do that save what don't throw them away because write on that what you did wrong or what you didn't like not say that wrong is the wrong word what you didn't like about it what didn't work so you don't repeat that mistake down the road Mm -hmm. So I would probably, I would recommend people do that, you know, hang on to those ones that you say, eh, I don't like that. But write down, document, this is what I used. This didn't work. So try and then try something else, you know, because um, it's a journey, you know, and it should be fun. Mm -hmm. 
you took something that I started with just a s- silly drawing 101 class. I taught you how to do building yeah. and you got excited by right. buildings, buildings. You moved on to a mm-hmm. giraffe where you found out now you've got color and you've got animals and you just went crazy. Yeah. You've been taking Collins classes and doing things far longer than me. I don't offer anything in that medium and you just ran with it. And that is what, what makes me so happy to see, yeah. to see you growing that way. Yeah. I think, you know, that's, it's, and that, Honestly, and you know, I would not have gotten there if I hadn't done those foundation classes and build skills. You have to do the, you have to do the work to get, you know, to to learn those basics and train your mind. You know, mm-hmm. um, like they shouldn't rely on you telling them what colors to use. You need to learn to pick your own colors. You know, mm-hmm. um, because otherwise, how how are you going to move on? Because you're not going to be sitting here in, in my studio area saying, all right, well, no, you need to use this color here. Not, not that. That's not, you need to learn to pick your own, you know, pick your own colors to, um, and getting the, the fundamentals for, for drawing and perspectives and that you, you, you need to learn that. Mm-hmm. And just doing it is the only way to do that. <laughs> now that we've talked about this, now I'm going to have to go and sketch something. So thank you, Lynn, for joining me today. And oh, you're welcome. For, keep keep looking for more of your work over on the Facebook group yep. as well, and seeing how you. Thanks so much for joining us for this conversation. Leave your comments in the doobly doo and your questions for Lynn as well. Over on my blog, I've got lots of pictures of Lynn's artwork links to her favorite supplies and to her social media so you can catch up with her as well. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Peace out.